Hi everybody, Ed here, and it's a beautiful day outside, and we're in the glass studio working on one of ten of these cabinet doors. So we wanted to film the first one just to show you how it goes together and let you see what the back of the cabinet door looks like. You can see that it is rabbited out, and I think I got that in the frame. You can see that it's rabbited out so that it will hold our lead just like that. So we're using a 3 8 flat H lead around the outside of this window. It's very simple and we're going to show you now how it goes together. So like I showed you before, it's just a simple uh, cabinet door, very simple cabinet door. Okay, And we're making sure that all of our lead joints, just like they should be at any time, are just right on the money, okay? Just right on the money. Now remember, when we start to go up the side here, we're using, we're using 3 8 flat H lead on our project. So when we cut our 3 8 lead like that on the side, now we want to come back and we just kind of tilt our pliers sideways, cut that off, and then lay them down perfectly square and cut that angle and make it look really, really nice, y'all. That's what we want to do. So now we're on the outside of our window here, just like this. Our lead is exactly where we need it. You know, if, if uh, all windows were this simple, I could stay caught up. <laughs> but uh, of course, I want you to, also want you to think about it, that we have, we have 10 of these to build. So it's really not that simple. This one, however, the customer's picking up later on in the week and they're gonna be, uh, checking them out and making sure that they look exactly the way they want them. So remember, lay your lead in there, mark it, make sure when you cut it that it's square. Because you usually, you know, if you cut your lead right, usually don't have any room to fudge around and goof off. So now we're on number four, which is this long piece going up the side. That's that. Again, square your lead up, bring it over here. Making sure that every piece of lead is exactly where it's supposed to be before you add another piece of lead. Okay. Just like that. Oh, so pretty. Very simple window, y'all, but so elegant. And by the time we put 10 of these around the top of the kitchen, and then there's two more that are going right beside the stove, it's really gonna look nice. So hey, we're gonna finish off this top piece of lead here and as you can see that's a goofy cut on that end and we but we we don't have enough to do that so I'm gonna use this piece of lead right here and we have perfect amount but that end still just like the other one so we're gonna lean our pliers back at an angle okay just like that and we're gonna take that off there it is and then we're gonna go straight down and now because if we cut our lead, you know, where the top is longer than the bottom or the bottom's longer than the top, one's going to touch the lead before the other, and on the other side, you're going to have a really bad gap, and nobody wants that. So we want to make sure that we get this lead marked exactly right, because we're getting ready to get out the soldering iron. 
and we're gonna finish this bad boy up. A simple cabinet door, nine pieces of glass. Have some fun with it. This is just a two inch border. The center works itself out and it works itself out on all 10 of the cabinet doors depending on their size. Cause some of them I think, I think there's two more that are a little bit bigger. But anyway, we've got it. You see this all together. We're just gonna put a couple little nails in it to hold everything in place. We're gonna get the soldering iron set up along with our wattage or temperature control. Get that ready and we're gonna solder this bad boy up. Hi everybody, it's Ed here and we're in the stained glass studio. Working on this cabinet door glass today, just kind of showing you how to do it. We're gonna take you through the whole process. While we're waiting on our iron to heat up, I just want, to, want you to know, we used a 3 8 flat H lead on the outside, which is perfect for our cabinet door, for the back of our cabinet door. That way it, it's gonna allow us to push point it and put some push points inside the cabinet door so that we can keep it in there. Remember, we don't wanna really, we don't wanna caulk the face of the stained glass to the wood because you'll never get it out if you have a problem. However, we are probably, we are definitely using push points on this and I haven't decided yet if we're gonna use a little small bead of white silicone around and make like a pocket because we do have enough room. So we're gonna decide that when we get to that point. Right now, our soldering iron is heating up. We're gonna check it and just make sure that it's hot enough. I have my watt, there it is. I have my wattage controller. My wattage controller is set right now on 80, 80. So uh, we're not gonna waste any time. I've got my Ruby Flux inside my trusty putty container. And we're gonna start out right here on this corner. We're gonna come over. And we're gonna do our touch and go. Remember guys, touch and go, it works great. And it gives you a nice, smooth joint. Now there aren't many joints on this window, okay? And when there aren't a whole lot of solder joints, none of them can be bad because they're all gonna show up. If you got a window with four or 500 solder joints in it, you know, that's one thing. They all should look good. But if you can't, nobody's really gonna notice. So remember now that we have a, we have a crossroads right here, okay? We have a crossroads. First, we're gonna do our T, touch and go. T, touch and go, T. Now we're gonna come down, we're gonna do another T on the side. T. Touch and go, one, two, three, a T. Now let's do a X. Now, or a cross. Now if you notice, I've got my soldering iron turned sideways. That's because I want an X just like that, okay? Touch and go, see that? Those solder joints, because there's only 12 of them, <laughs> all 12 of them better look good because you're gonna see every one of them. Again, if you've got four or 500 solder joints and you mess up on one, you know who's gonna notice? Nobody. If you've got 12 solder joints and you mess up on one, you know who's gonna notice? Everybody especially the ladies friends that come in and say oh do you see that solder joint on that cabinet door of yours oh my gosh and i'm gonna say oh well I'm, it wasn't mine <laughs> so here we go so keep in mind as you're using your solder and iron it's cooling off so you can take like a few second break in between you know in between your solder joints and remember one two three straight up okay here we go ready three straight up just like that here we go we're doing an x and we're our soldering iron is on the diagonal and here we go one two three straight up just like that can you i hope you got a good shot of that 
because everybody's been wanting us to give them close-ups and I'm we're trying to get as close as we can. So remember, you see this? That's a crossroads for your lead and we, we can't, we don't want to hold our soldering iron straight. We want to hold our soldering iron at an angle to cover as much of those four pieces as we can. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. And guess what? There's our X. X marks the spot, everybody. We're gonna pull our nails out. We're gonna move this and we're gonna cut this down and we're gonna flip it over and do the other side. I sure hope this is helping everybody. I sure hope it's helping everybody because, you know, everybody's doing the same thing. It's just that everybody, else, everybody does it differently, okay? So technically, when you think about it, everyone, it's not the same thing. And you know what? Even if 12 solder joints, I forgot one. So I'm not sure if we're still taping or not. But if we are, I forgot a solder joint. And that's why you always, you always look at them. Okay? Look at that. See there, y'all? And yes, you know what the next question coming from you is? And you know what the answer is? Yes, you have to putty it. Yes. <laughs> Let's solder this other side and I'm gonna show you a way to putty it. We're not gonna putty it traditionally. We're gonna use our thumb, but we're gonna use the traditional putty because there's no reason for us to get putty all over everything. We wanna, we wanna stop the glass from sounding like popcorn in a pan. Here we go. So we flip the window over and um, you know, it was funny because there's, a, there's only 12 or 16 solder joints on this window and you know, I, I still forgot one before I flipped it over. So anyway, just we're gonna do this again. This is, it's, hey, it's good therapy for you, it's good therapy for me, ready? Now remember, our soldering iron's been sitting for a few seconds. So we just wanna go one, two, three, just like that, boom. One, this is a T, two, Three, straight up. This is a T. One, two, three, straight up. Here's another one. All right, so here we go again. Now we have these, what are they, our crossroads here, everybody. These are our crossroads. So we're gonna take our crossroads and we're gonna hold our soldering iron at an angle, 45 degrees to the window. One, two, three. And there's our cross. You know, I just, I, I enjoy doing this so much and, 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 and this is true time on this window, putting it together. We just wanted to show you this start, start the finish because it's important. So. I'm going to show you that one more time. That right there is too much flux, everybody, okay? It's too much flux, and your iron is too cool, and that's exactly what it looks like when that happens. So we're going to come over here, and our iron is heated back up now, just like that, okay? Perfect. So sometimes when you have many, 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 many solder joints, you can work almost too fast. And your iron will get very cold. So if you're gonna work fast, which myself I prefer to do, turn your iron up a little bit hotter and then you'll be able to work a little bit faster as your iron's gonna stay hotter longer for you. And that little bit of flux isn't gonna affect you. Okay, this is what we, this is what we got going on. We're gonna take just a, a short, we're gonna do a cut Ed's going to get the putty and we're going to thumb putty this. Okay. So we're taking some soft putty. We're not going to do the whole window. We're going to do, well, we are going to do the whole window, 
but we're not like gonna smear it on everywhere. We're just gonna, we're gonna pack this in with our fingers here, just like that. You know, the whole idea, especially in a cabinet door like this, is to keep the glass from rattling. You don't want your customers opening and closing their cabinet doors and then a whole bunch of rattling going on. So you can see how the putty, because with the lacquer thinner in it, you can see how the putty starts to dry. And as it's drying, I said I'm just scraping a little bit right off the side of the bucket here. And I'm just using the side of my thumb. Now when I first started doing stained glass, we didn't we didn't break our putty down so that it was soft. We used it kind of like I'm using it now and we and we puttied even big church windows by hand. So you can see this is drying out and it's really looking good here. This putty is going to keep the glass from rattling, but it's also going to help us It's also going to help us polish the lead up a little bit. All right, so you see that side? I just puttied this side and polished it. Look at the difference. So I'm going to get this back on the uh, get it back down on the table, and we're going to get it puttied. Okay, so we've we've soldered it. Now we've hand puttied this this other side here, and now we're going to polish it. So I found over the years the best way to polish these windows, or to at least polish the lead and make it look like a, just a nice dark pretty pewter, is to use what's called an acid brush. Buy them in the in the in your convenience store, you know, in your little hard local hardware store, and uh, this one, as you can see, I've had for quite a long time, but it does such a wonderful job. Okay. So once you get that side done, you're going to flip this up, flip it over, and we're going to do this side. We're going to make sure that the lead is cut from the edges and it's perfectly, nothing oozing out. And then once we do this part of the process, we're going to allow it to sit. and firm up and we're going to polish it one more time and then we'll install it in our customer's cabinet door. So this is Ed along with Barb. Please, you know, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. If this helped you out, hopefully you learned a little something. Give us a thumbs up. We appreciate all of your input and don't forget Monday nights at 7 p.m live Q&A with Barb and Ed on the RDRV glass channel. So we finished the window and we've got it cleaned up and now we're going to install it into our cabinet door. Now the customer already has little holes drilled and I'm guessing that that's for clips but they're going to want to pick this up. So we're going to install some push points in very specific areas so that you know, they're very unobtrusive. So on this horizontal that you see right here, this is where we're gonna put it. We're gonna put a push point here and we're gonna put a push point here. And these are just glazing points. They're manufactured, oh, excuse me. They're manufactured by Fletcher. You can pick them up at your hardware store, but they're very uh, simple little piece. Everybody knows what a glazing point is. You know, back in the day they used to, Take, they would take a, a uh, upholstery tack and actually drive that nail right into the wood on top of the lead and hold it in like that. And if you've ever restored some windows, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. So I've got a flat putty knife or what's called a five and one. I'm just gonna set my push point right here and I'm gonna push it in like that, right there, just like that. Now I'm gonna do the same right here on this other joint. So now again, strategically placing our push points. 
So if you've ever glazed a window in an old house or something, you know that wood is much softer than these wooden cabinet doors. So we're gonna turn that around one more, a half a turn. And we're gonna come in right here. You can see my glazing point. You can see my putty knife. So you just watched us put the push points in this beautiful little simple, simple cabinet door. And you know, I suggest maybe if you're, if you're just now starting out with lead, try and lead a small window like this together. It'll give you the benefit of knowing how things go together without starting out with a very intricate pattern and not really knowing where to go. So now that we've got this installed in the cabinet door, we're gonna clean it up, get the glass all nice and shiny. And now that I'm smiling, you can see my happiness that this project is finished. Thanks for tuning in today. This is Ed along with Barb in the stained glass studio for the RDRV channel. Thanks again for tuning in.